Bokeh Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Good morning, friends. And I uh, just wanted to bring to your attention here on October the 7th, uh, this was released uh, this morning that Russia is considering, pondering the relaunch of, a mili of its military bases in Cuba and Vietnam, according to a deputy defense minister. Uh, this is clearly, uh, I had to bring this out to you guys right away this morning once I saw that Americans would be waking up by now. This is clearly a prophetic broadcast news that uh, I see on the horizon. And I'm going to share with you here in just a moment why. First, let's just take a look at the article here. Um, it is Moscow is considering plans to return to Cuba and Vietnam where it had military bases in the past, Russian Deputy Defense Minister Nikolai Pankov said on Friday. Now, those of you that may not be aware of this, Russia, uh, of course, closed the base down in the mid-1980s. Uh, this was, um, you know, at a height of the tensions we know, especially back in the 60s under John F. Kennedy when we had the, uh, the standoff between the United States and Russia on certain defenses that they were bringing in uh, nuclear missiles. And it, it nearly sent the world to a nuclear war. But what really caught my attention about Russia reopening the Cuban base is a dream that I had years ago, and I've spoke about the dream many times uh, here on Israeli News Live uh, over the course of uh, several years, not, not frequently. But uh, in the dream that I'd seen, I had saw Russian MiGs, such as what you see pictured here and behind me here, flying over Florida. And the United States was definitely at war. Uh, the U.S., uh, Flor at least Florida, the region of Florida, was under a heavy attack by Russian MiGs. Um, and I knew that it was definitely a third world war and we were seeing the end of the United States uh, from the attacks that I was seeing there. But the thing that kind of concerned me in having this dream was how would Russia ever get MiGs all the way to Florida? They have only one aircraft carrier and I can assure you if that aircraft carrier uh, approached uh, Florida whatsoever, the U.S. military would end up sinking the ship. I mean, it would just be obvious without, without even question that this is what the U.S. Uh, government would do. Because of the fear that there could be a launch of an attack there on uh, the, the mainland of the United States. But now we are seeing that Russia uh, is planning on reopening the Cuban air base. And of course that would give striking distance uh, for a Russian MiG to be able to strike anywhere in Florida in that part of the hemisphere of the United States, taking the southern section of the United States easily. But we have to also consider this fact as well. It seems that Russia is only starting to play the same game that the United States has been playing now for over the last two years against Russia, ever since the Ukrainian crisis began that was started by the CIA to topple uh, President uh, uh, Yanukovych uh, and install the uh, U.S.-backed uh, Roman puppet there for Petro Poroshenko over the Ukrainian people. And then, of course, they began a genocide on those that were Russian-speaking people inside the country. Um, ever since then, though, NATO has used this particular uh, basis to launch more and more military uh, setups inside of, uh, right there on Russia's border in Lithuania, Latvia, uh, now Poland, etc. NATO is building up massive amounts of troops there. Up to 30,000 are stationed there on a rotation basis, on a regular basis. Everything against all the agreements that the U.S. made with Russia after the collapse of the Soviet Union, promising that they would never do these things. But what's odd is how that the U.S. government caused the fall in the, in the, in the uh, topple of the uh, democratically elected leader Yanukovych uh, from power and then turn around and blame Russia for invading Ukraine. Well, Russia never invaded Ukraine. If anything, it would be similar to that of Syria. Yanukovych invited Russia there to rescue him from the coup that was being staged by the CIA. There's been enough leaked documents that can prove that already. So uh, it's just tit for tat, it seems like. Now Russia is starting to give the uh, Obama administration a taste of its own medicine. And I would say this uh, by the administration and not that of the American people, because I'm sure many of the American people would have honored uh, their word to Russia as 
Putin has honored his own word to the United States, even when President uh, George Bush stated that he was the greatest ally the U.S. could have, that of President Vladimir Putin. But things have changed on the Obama administration, and now even in the political scheme of things, we're seeing that even uh, Donald Trump is starting to back away a little bit from uh, standing and bringing peace about between the United States and Russia and starting to lean more towards the Obama administration's rhetoric stating that Russia broke the ceasefire in Syria when indeed Russia never broke the ceasefire. It was clearly broke by uh, the United States when they did the attack on the Syrian army as well as uh, their, their little back thugs all through the uh, nation of Syria. And of course, the U.S. was the one who started the civil war inside Syria as well. So it's clearly an aggression on the, uh, on the Obama administration. And uh, I can't say that another administration would have done differently, but I do believe that in the case of Donald Trump and Mike Pence, um, we probably would see a different scenario at this point here. So I, I clearly can see, now that I'm seeing that Russia is looking at reopening the Cuban base there, no doubt they will once again station their Russian MiGs there in Cuba as a deterrent with the United States. And even if there is a war that breaks out in the Middle East, it will give them striking distance to Florida. And the dream that I saw will become a reality, a vision. And that would be something that could be fulfilled in the near future. Good news of that is, is that it may be a little further out. We may not be seeing the war right yet on the horizon. It might be a little further out now uh, for the timing for Russia to move in defenses there, but that could be done practically overnight with Russia as well. So I just don't know what's going to happen. The other thing, speaking about visions and dreams and things here, we see that Russia's Black Sea Fleet is now in the Mediterranean, <coughs> excuse me, Mediterranean there in the prowess in Syria. Uh, is, I think Tink is beginning to look at this. This is uh, given the Black Sea Fleet a new purpose uh, as we see five uh, Russian warships there cruising there uh, in the Mediterranean near Syria. But it also reminds me of the famous biblical prophecy I shared with you the other day. Um, and let me just pull that up real quick because I, I forget if that was in Jeremiah. I think that's in Jeremiah chapter 49 when we were discussing this the other day that clearly... We are looking at prophecy when we see, yes, Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 23, concerning Damascus, Hamath is confounded in Arpad, for they have heard evil tidings. They are faint-hearted. There is sorrow on the sea, and it cannot be quiet. Maybe the fight does not begin actually on Damascus itself, but it is concerning Damascus. This is what's interesting. And there is sorrow on the sea. Now, they said they have heard evil tidings. That evil tidings may be that there is a, an attack planned on Russian ships in the sea there, or vice versa. It may be that Russia is planning uh, to, to deal with American ships in this region. I don't know which way it's going to go. Uh, but nonetheless, they are fainthearted. There is sorrow on the sea, and it cannot be quiet. It lets us know that this is one of the reasons or one of the things that will cause the war to spiral out of control. Damascus has waxed feeble and turneth herself to flee, and fear has seized on her anguish and sorrow. I've taken her as a woman in travail. I'm only awaiting to see just how many ships the United States will end up sending into this region as a result of that. Uh, but anyway, in other news also, let me turn our attention to Israel, Iran. Iranian official, we have war warehouses full of missiles that can flatten Tel Aviv. This is being reported by uh, United with Israel. And uh, it says uh, Moshe Ragi Hadost, uh, a former minister of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, reportedly told Tehran political gathering, we have warehouses full of missiles in Tehran, uh, Zanyan uh, Ash Ashnavia, that can strike Tel Aviv. Uh, that's the threat there. And they mentioned in the article there that if only one missile from Israel lands in Tehran, inside of Iran, anywhere, they will flatten Tel Aviv and Haifa. It was also seen uh, on a sign that was paraded around uh, Iran not too long ago on the side of a truck that they would flatten both uh, Tel Aviv and Haifa uh, in, in the latest round of rhetoric coming out of Iran. Now, the problem is, though, what I look at is that 
with the ties between uh, the Obama administration and that of Prime Minister Netanyahu and the strengthening of those ties there that have, uh, after the huge military deal was made with uh, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, it has only endangered the Israeli people even more, not because of the uh, economic uh, uh, agreements that were made there, but it makes Israel, the Israeli government that is, more of a puppet to the Obama uh, regime and threatens the security of, and the peace of the people of Israel. Very concerning to me as well as we watch things that are unfolding there with Iran and only can condemn everything about uh, Iran's statement there. Iran always wanting to uh, talk about annihilating the Jewish people in their homeland there. Very concerning. We're, we still are going to be doing a special broadcast on that to show you where all this has uh, started from uh, in, in, in the very, very near uh, future here, either today or tomorrow one. Uh, Assange backed uh, into a corner, dropped a bomb on the entire U.S. government. Uh, he's getting ready to release a new document about Hillary Clinton, Julia Assange, and WikiLeaks have done this world a great service. While they are not a group actually hacking agencies, they have spent more than 10 years collecting and validating, archiving, and dismantling information that people deserve to see. Uh, WikiLeaks has played a major role in exposing Hillary Clinton, as well as many others have made great attempts that lack the physical evidence hidden in the government documents. When Assange released everything, he had exposed the, uh, the DNC for rigging the elections in favor of Hillary, as we already know, over Bernie Sanders. But now he's dropped a new crumb, and he is waiting to see who will pick it up and who will run with it. Emails released will unequivocally show that Hillary Clinton is the founder of ISIS, and Barack Hussein Obama helped her. Well... All you have to do is listen to Vladimir Putin, President Putin, to know this. He's the one that actually has brought that bombshell all out already. But I am sure to see the actual documents that can prove this uh, would only be that much more ammunition uh, at possibly stopping her from becoming the next president of the United States. Or will we never stop that in the first place? Will the election, election be rigged, which even Donald Trump has suggested that it may be rigged as well, uh, that would stop him from gaining power? Can't quite say the answer to that. Don't know about that in prophecy, but we do know there's a lot of things about the United States that clearly are in biblical prophecy. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Another interesting day and news is breaking faster than any one news organization could keep up with. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.